Welcome to the Buker and Friends podcast, co-starring 10-year NFL veteran and Super Bowl champion, Will Blackman. Bending from the end zone, he throws, had it deflect away, and it is picked off by Will Blackman, the former giant. Tim Dwight watches it hit, bounces, picks it up at the 10, slips a defender, fumble the football, it's up for grabs, it's covered in the end zone by Will Blackman for a Green Bay touchdown! And now, here is your host. Let's send it over to Rick Buecher. Rick Buecher. Welcome to another episode of Buecher and Blackman, subsidiary of Buecher and Friends on the United Wecast Network. I'm Rick Buecher. He is NFL Back. vet. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> <whoa>. <laughs> yes, he is. He's back. He's also a Super Bowl champ. He's Will Blackman. Will, it's good to have you back. I'm glad they, they let you back in the country. Sorry, I almost blew off your eardrums. Yeah, you, you, you got me. Uh, John, our producer, is going to have a word with you because he's going to try to, he's gonna have to try to modulate that down because you didn't just blow my eardrums. You blew the eardrums of all our listeners when they tune in. Sorry, I'm excited to be back on U.S. soil. It's good to have you back. I assume that you had a passport that allowed you to get back in. I did. I asked that because my wife is on a trip, and she went to the airport, and she says, guess who lost their license, their driver's license? And I was like, thought, okay, the, the nanny, or <laughs> somebody who's <laughs> driving our kids, or uh, you? She goes, yes. She still made it through the TSA, don't listen. Anybody who's p- part of TSA, don't listen to this right now. They still let her through security. She, sh- she showed like her Costco card or something. Really? Yeah, and they let her. They let her through. I said, "You better double check." She doesn't on have that. like a copy. She doesn't have a copy from a previous trip. Maybe a copy. What do you mean? Well, like of her you know, license? so kind of like protocol when you travel ab- abroad. You know, she didn't we, go abroad. She's just going to Houston. Well, to anywhere. We just make copies of our like passports in case something oh, happened you're, like that. You're oh, well, when we go overseas, we'll photocopy the, the passports. Okay, but to Houston, no. You figure all you need is your driver's license. You should be good. <laughs> she, had a, she had a library card. And she, she had, pretty, pretty much. She <laughs> talked her way through. Because you hear all these horror stories about TSA. TSA's yeah, not uh, that bad. She can be charming. She can turn the charm on when she needs to. I'm guessing that's what, that's what happened. In any event, uh, I don't know if she's going to make it back from Houston. We'll see. She can talk her way back. I did send her a, a photo of her passport. So maybe that'll cover. But that's why I asked. So uh, for those who may not know, Will was in London working for Sky Sports. How was it? Uh, it was a good time. I was excited to go out there, try to uh, work on my international network. Yeah? How'd yeah, that go? It was, it was cool. It was a long day. I was there from three. We worked from three to about midnight. Okay. Work has to be put in quotations because you were also on Twitter an awful lot. I was on a lot. Yeah. That's work, actually. <laughs> mm, it can it can be. I'll give you that. Yeah, it can be. But so, what were you doing well, from three to midnight? Well, so when we get to the station, yeah, well, I had the pregame show and then the halftime show and the postgame show. But during the game, when we go on commercial break, mm-hmm. being that we're televising, let's say if it's CBS or Fox, we're televising their games. We're not showing their commercials, so it cuts back to us in the studio, and we kind of like fill in what happened. Got you. So I was like, oh, wow, this is more than I that thought. That is a lot you know? of work. So it was cool. Yeah. It is, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was a good time. That's like an eight-hour rain delay. That's what I'm saying. It was a good time, yeah. yeah. And then, not to mention, the Sunday night game came on at 1 a.m. Oof. In London. So when I got home, I was like, oh, I'm going to lay down. But I wanted to see the game. Yeah. Where so did you? I have not gone to bed yet. Still not. Still. I mean, but you flew back. You didn't sleep on the I plane? Did. I watched all the right moves with Tom Cruise. Oh my! <laughs> that is an underrated football movie, by the way. Um, Stop hating. You are the biggest hater. My goodness. Better, Gosh. better than Jerry Maguire. No. Okay. Better than what? Not better than Rudy. Oh, better than Rudy. Sure. I'm, that, Rudy was sappy. <laughs> Rudy didn't do it. Do it for me. What was the one with Pacino? Any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. What'd you think of that? I thought it was cool. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what we'll do on another podcast. We'll do our top five. We'll do our top five football movies. We'll do our, our top five all time sports movies. And uh, somehow by we got to. I'll say, by the way, D Hall is very complimentary. Of who? Me. 
He was very complimentary of you? Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. He worked with me. Like, why is he complimentary <laughs> of you? No, I, I listen to the podcast. Oh, well, I, yes. Okay. So he's your friend. No. Okay. So I have a confession. Okay. I don't listen to our podcast. <laughs> Ever? <laughs> I don't. Ever? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason well, is... Well, you hear it the, the first time, re- so... Here's the, here's the reason. Yeah. I hate... I, I have an issue with listening to myself. Hmm. You don't like the way so you sound? Even, no, it's just weird. It's weird. It's weird listening to me, um, I guess... Talk about things? Perform. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> I get that. So even if I do something on TV, I just, I cringe. I can't watch it. Okay. So this was the first time you listened to the podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> so, so what do you think of our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, John, you did a pretty good with the music. And uh, I like the production. Everything is good. <laughs> we're, we're doing a good job here. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. All right. Months later. <laughs> oh, no wonder we've got it. We're, we're building such an audience. We got a, we got a pretty good thing here. How about that? I'm glad you agree. All right. So we do need to get to some football. And since you missed the opportunity to share with our listeners your thoughts about everything that happened on Sunday, and Sunday was a very eventful day uh, across the board. Whether it was the Steelers holding off the Patriots or the Eagles upsetting the Rams or the Colts shutting out. The Cowboys, am I forgetting anything? Redskins uh, beating the Jags, the Browns beating the Broncos. Yeah. It was well those were the Saturday Saturday games. Well yeah, but but we, uh, we yeah, we didn't touch upon those, but is there is there anything in particular? I'm going to start here. The Colts because we've kind of had this running dialogue about the Colts and you being impressed but not believing that they're necessarily a postseason team. Does anything change now? Did I say that? I think I think you did. And if you didn't, I'm saying that you said I it. Think, so. I think you continue to challenge me on that because I thought I said I said in one of our podcasts that we see I I would remember if I listened to it <laughs> again, but <laughs> I said that they could potentially, you know, win their division. They could, but I mean Houston's way ahead now. Right. But no, it's it's possible. Especially what happened uh, this weekend versus Dallas, that was crazy. But uh, they have two two games left that are definitely in their favor. Hmm. You know, Tennessee, you, you just don't know who you're going to see. Get. That, yeah, yeah, you just don't know. But if there's a strength of the Colts' defense, it's their rushing defense, which would you know I, I, I like my chances if I'm making Mariota beat me with his arm as opposed to Derrick Henry getting loose or, or Mariota being able to run. So I, I think that tilts things in the favor. Not to, I mean, that's a simplified look at it, but I like yeah, the Colts' like chances. Yeah, you, you might have one game where Mariota is throwing a ball for 300 yards. You just don't know. Yeah. Well, and the other part is, is that they're tied with the Ravens, and the Ravens, I know that they finish with the Browns, and the Steelers right now, in spite of everything, still look like they're on track to win the division. And I believe the Ravens would hold on to that wild card spot. So it, it Well they it, have two tough they have two tough games. They have the Saints. We don't know who they're gonna play. You know, New Orleans their what their game plan is. Yeah, true. But also they also they have the Bengals. And the Bengals are looking to spoil everybody's <laughs> playoffs hopes, you don't, know. Don't, are you saying that facetiously? No, I'm being serious. Stop sleeping on Driscoll. I'm not sleeping on. I'm not, trust me. I'm not sleeping on anything when it comes to the Bengals. I just there's a certain point you can always tell the Bengals fan they're just pure scar tissue. I, I've seen this act enough times that I don't. When they suddenly do something remarkable, I mean, they sucked me in again this year. The way they started, I was like, "Wow, Andy Dalton looks different. There's a different demeanor about this team. They might have lost was. to the Steelers. The year he was rolling. Yeah, I, across the board, but." Then once again, it all unraveled. It's the, the the problem is is that they're always fragile. You lose AJ Green and suddenly everything changes. In spite of what Joe Mixon was doing, Dalton was doing. I, I don't. I still am trying to figure out what happened with the defense. Uh, the secondary, okay, leave something to be desired. But they were getting the job done at the beginning of the year. I don't want to talk about the Bengals. I all do. Right. I do want to talk about the Rams. Before we move on to 
the Panthers and the Saints. And what we really have to talk about is Cam Newton. But I want to talk about the Rams and I want to talk about Jared Goff. Because D'Angelo and I did in yesterday's podcast. And I feel as if we were too low on Jared at the beginning. We got a little too high. And now the water is seeking its level. And I just wonder what your take is on Goff and his ability to to function if teams are going to take away the deep ball and he has to be, I don't want to say system guy, but he's, he's, he's going to have to function just making smart play after smart play rather than striking big and overwhelming teams that way. Are you saying he's turning into Kirk? What are you saying? I'm not saying he's turning into Kirk, but, I, but I'm wondering whether there's more Kirk and Jared Goff than I ever imagined. Well, I feel like based on the team success, I feel like everyone was way too high on Jared Goff. I think yeah, I think he's a good player. I think he's a really good quarterback. But he he's in a, he's in a situation where he, he is built for success. Like I said when when Sean McVay took over, all the moves that they made, whether it was coaching, players, or whatever it was, was put in place for that team to do well. I mean, you like I said you go back to the coaching staff, you have, you know, obviously Sean's the head coach. You have, you know, Wade Phillips, who's another head coach who's run the defense. You bring in Joe Barry, who is a former D coordinator, who's the assistant to the head coach. And you just have veteran coaches across the board where Sean can just do his job, you know. And then you you sign Dominican Sue. You know, you bring in Akeem. You bring in Peters. You bring in all these guys who, who, who have had success, who knows what it takes to win, who knows how to police themselves and her leadership. You know, you bring in Robert Woods last year. So you make all these acquisitions where the team can do well. Then obviously you have the best running back in Todd Gurley. So things are around him for him to do well. So to your point, yeah, when when stuff starts breaking down, when things aren't going his way, when he's dealing with all kinds of pressure, it's like, okay, everything's not going well right now. So, so what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. You know, and if we are comparing with Kirk Cousins, that's kind of what was going on there, too. We yep. we made, you know, acquisitions where he had Deshaun Jackson, Jameson Crowder, Jordan Reed, a really good offensive line in, in that case. And then when, say, Jordan wasn't getting open, say, Deshaun was, was hurt one game. Yeah. we Oh, yeah. We have Pierre Garçon, Garçon too. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, exactly. Or hurt. What are you going to do now? Yep. What, what's going to happen? You know, so, I mean, that's what I saw. I guess and Dihal made a good point too, is that uh, Philly has seen Sean McVay for a long time, uh, right. what he can do. So right. they definitely had a lot of ammo going into this game to play against him. They looked comfortable. That defensively, they look very comfortable. <laughs> they look they look comfortable as a whole. It, it's funny, man. It's <laughs> we keep talking about Nick Foles, just how the, the whole energy just changed. Yes. Well, and and how about this? So Wentz is not on the IR. There is a question whether he has a cracked vertebrae or not. But they're saying they're rolling with foals. How much do you read in that? You, you could dismiss it and say, look, Wentz has a cracked vertebrae and you don't want to risk it. And Foles has demonstrated that he can, he can deliver. So just go with that. Do you put anything more into it than that? You look at it as they are more than – obviously they're more than comfortable in rolling with Foles. He's a Super Bowl MVP. Mm-hmm. I mean, what what more do you need? But it doesn't make sense to, okay, we're going to put Wentz back out there. Then he really jacks up his back. And then now you're stuck with Nick Foles. And then, I mean, yeah, I mean, I like Nate Sudfeld. Uh, I was with him in, in Washington. But now you're down, you know, essentially down to like one or one or two quarterbacks. So right now, Wentz is obviously still their future. So why put him out there right now to make matters worse when you have a quarterback who is, beyond more than capable yeah. because he showed you last year that he took you to the promised land and got you your Super Bowl. If you're the Jacksonville Jags, do you go after Foles or Flacco? I'm going I'm trading everything for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Door number 3. <laughs> do you I, No, no. Honest no, actually I thought about that too because I I just watched uh, Deion Sanders saying how Green Bay's never going to win the Super Bowl. Yes, I saw Aaron's that too. Aaron's not happy there. He's disappointed. I'm like, "Well, that's kind of far-fetched. They just they got a new GM. He's going to make a few more moves this offseason and the draft to get more players to help him out. They'll be fine." But Jazz can't afford him. I like Nick Foles 
to go to Jacksonville because right now Nick Foles he understands the whole the whole RPO like he understands the whole future of football and he's been he was blessed because he had Chip Kelly so he understands all that stuff and he runs that really well and I think that's what definitely can help Jacksonville and plus Nick Foles doesn't make many mistakes right that's things that he doesn't do so you need someone like him because what I love about Nick Foles I love his integrity not just as a player but just as a person you know and that type of stuff is infectious and contagious and like I said the way the Eagles play they just play just at ease they knew that Nick was going to take care of business and do his job his integrity in terms of a guy who was a Super Bowl MVP comes back he's the backup and then he accepts that role and he keeps himself ready and then he steps in and when needed delivers again is that what and, you mean and tr- and tr- yeah and truly delivered he didn't just you know play a good game to make sure he manages well no i mean he stood there and got the ball to alshon jeffrey who has not seen the ball in a long time mm-hmm. got it to him stands there in the pocket gets laid out and chucks the ball he does this every time he gets in the game he goes for it that's what i love he goes for it because he's extremely prepared Okay, so the Monday night game that we just saw uh, had the Saints outlasting the Panthers 12 to 9, I believe was the final score. Not what you expect from the Saints, but they get it done on the road and look, a win is a win. We can talk about the Saints at another time. I think the number one question I have is uh, we know Cam Newton is playing injured, but is it anything more than that? Is it just that he has a bad shoulder right now and that we'll at some point see Cam get back to being Cam. I don't know the extent of his injury. I know he did have surgery in the off season, right? Last year yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know the extent of his injury, but yeah, that was just an ugly game overall. It was an ugly game overall. It was almost to the point where do you want Cam out there? Cause it was just, it was wo- some of the throws were just woeful. You're like, Oh my goodness. I go back and forth in that. There's so much that he can do. I, I get it, but it was painful to watch. Let me put it that way. This is always painful for me is to see a great athlete and whether it's father time or it's injury to see them compromised. And you just go, oh, that's, I remember what he could do. And that is far less than what he's capable of. It was hard to watch for me. I don't know because New Orleans, they shut everything down. And New Orleans, they do have the number one uh, run defense. I think they've only given up 77 yards a game, which is unreal. The speed on their defense is breathtaking. Oh, yeah. They, they, their they're, ability they're to all over the place. Oof. Yeah, Dennis Allen, Dennis Allen has them uh, all over the place. But what is that? Is that their fifth loss in a row? For Carolina? I can check that for you. Dennis Allen, by the way, I got to know him a little bit when he was the Raiders head coach for a hot minute. And I really liked him. I thought he got He's probably better as a coordinator than he is as a head coach. I don't know if he has that presence of a head coach, but I thought he he really wasn't given a chance. He was there in the transition years with the Raiders, and they were just yeah. they were patchwork. S- six loss in a row. Yikes. So, I mean, weak arm or not, I mean, they lost six games straight. After being at one point where they won three in a row and they met the Steelers. And I'm like, oh, wow, this can go, you know, this is a great matchup. This is a potential playoff matchup. And then they go on a tear and, and lose all these games. So, I don't know. I think, I think Cam is cool. I think he's a, re- I think he's a you know, good athlete, you know, former MVP. But I'm, I remember playing against him and watching film and studying him. There was nothing really that jumped out that's like, oh, shoot, we got Cam this week. We got to watch out. No, it's like, okay, he gets in the red zone. Yeah, he can run the ball. He can move the chains. It's different, but it's like just be in your spot. He's not going to like dice you up, hmm. you know, throw all these accurate passes down the field. So, okay, his arm strength went down, and that hurt him, yeah, because he can stand there and get blasted and throw the ball 60 yards or, you know, he can hit hit the 20-yard comeback or the 25-yard dig. He can hit those, but you got to be able to do more than that. And, and a prime example is the guy across from him and Drew Brees. Drew Brees takes what he can, methodically moves down the field. You know, he was 23 for 35, hit 203. Uh, Wasn't one of his best performances, but did what he needed to do. I guess it comes down to this. Let's say he gets the shoulder shoulder right. Have we seen the best of Cam? The best Cam was 2015. That was the best Cam. And we're not going to... I mean, technically, he was playing very well this year. True. 
How much of that was North Turner, statistic. though, coming in? and A lot of it was North Turner coming in. Yeah. And a lot of it was also everyone had to account for Christian McCaffrey for real. Yes. He's been a godsend for them. So what's the thing, if, if the Panthers, other than Cam's health, what is it that you think that they need to add for next year? What's the weakness with them right now that they should be looking at draft-wise? Well, they don't. They did go get DJ Moore, but I still think they need a a prolific. I mean, they might get a tight end first round because we don't know the deal with Olsen. He's been getting beat up the past few years now, so I think they're definitely going to address that position offensively. Um, continue to get some depth on the line because I mean he's getting blasted, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think too that he. I think he's probably going to sit with Norv this off season. And if I was him, I would just truly just sit with Norv and and watch film. You no, know, he has a pretty good relationship with Troy Aikman, and so you know, just just truly continue to be a student because you can't you can't get destroyed like this for so long. Right. So I think that's where he can elevate his game is just continue to be more of a student, find ways to protect yourself with your arm, as opposed to you know your your body. I look at somebody like Philip Rivers, how he can play so long. Yeah, because Philip was he was what North in in uh, San Diego, yep. right? Yep, sure yeah. was. So. I mean, there you go right there. Look at me connecting the dots. How about that? <laughs> Speaking of connecting dots, so as you know, because you actually listen to the podcast, D told us about your Deion Sanders tendencies when it came to being fly, both on and off the field. <laughs> so what I need to know is, like, I don't, I don't recall a standout thing about you dressing so fly on the field. What was it that had to be so exact with you? What made you... I don't know. It wasn't... <laughs> you know what? I think it's exaggerating in terms of whether how how good I look playing or not. I, I think what he probably meant was... So when we got ready, I made sure I had about five options of what I was going to wear. I would wear something, go out to pregame. Okay, check it out. I would come back, change, go out for warm-ups, come Wait, back... Wait a minute. What, what What do you mean? Like five different options? You got one like, uniform. Like, you got one like uniform. Shoes, like shoes or how? Like yeah, different cleats. I probably had like five pairs of cleats in my locker. You know how how am I gonna wear my socks that day? Do I want to wear a white sleeve, a black sleeve, a burgundy sleeve, oh. a gold sleeve? What color What color gloves am I gonna wear? Am I gonna wear a shield? Am I gonna wear a dark shield and take the fine? Am I not gonna wear a shield? Am I gonna wear eye black? What color mouthpiece am I gonna wear? Am okay. I gonna tape my fingers like this? Am I gonna wear a towel on my left side, my right side? Like what am I gonna? <laughs> All right, hold on. Did you just say the only it, Dion, Did you the just only say Dion, it was exaggerated? What, like you can't, you can't give me that list and preface no, it by I, saying I think he was exaggerating a little bit. No, I, I'm saying in terms of like how I how I looked. Like I didn't have about I didn't have like 30 socks and 80 wristbands on. Like I didn't have all those things, but I did shuffle through. Like what I'm gonna wear? Got you. Was there was. <laughs> <laughs> was there a must have? The only, the only Dion part about that was the whole, you know, look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Yeah, play yeah. good. I've always, I've always actually believed, yeah. in, in believed in that as well. Okay, so what about off, off the field? Like, oh yeah, to answer your question, my go-to, I had to wear a sleeve. Okay, if I didn't wear a sleeve. Like I hate superstition stuff. I'm not really big into that. But if mm. I didn't wear a sleeve. And if I didn't do well, then I'm like, damn, I didn't wear my sleeve. Wait a minute, you forget? No, like, so, no, because some days I wanted a different look. Oh, okay. Sometimes you wouldn't wear a sleeve? On. Yeah, because I like the way it looked. Maybe that day I did extra, like, curls. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, so we have, to get to the, we have to get to the Christmas card, too. So I have a question. Because you were, you were upset that I tweeted out that we discussed your Christmas card. <laughs> and I put in parentheses, photoshopped, question mark. And the only reason that I look, you sh- I wish everyone could see the look on Will's face right now. And the only reason I, 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 I said that is because there was you and Shauna cuddled up, and then the kids were like about three feet to your right. It was like you photoshopped two photos together. Like there was a photo of you guys that you liked, and there was a photo of your kids that you liked. And so you just kind of put them together in one photo. And the kids were like, and my daughter pointed this out. She goes, the kids aren't even wearing the same clothes. Like the kids had a matching outfit and you guys had a matching outfit. It looked like two different photos put together, mashed together. Okay. (laughs) Is that what happened? Anything anything else you want to say about the card? (laughs) Your kids are unbelievably beautiful. They are. And uh, as is Shauna, you have a very beautiful family. 
Is that Thank your you. staircase? You have a- that is not our staircase. That is the staircase uh, where we got married, though. It's a, it's a, it was the St. Regis and Dana Point, which is now called the Monarch Beach Club Resort. And was everybody in the photo there at the time that it was taken? Was that actually a single <laughs> yes, photo? Yes, everybody was there. Okay. My gosh. All right. I, you know what? I, I shouldn't be saying anything because we don't even have you our Christmas. You shouldn't say, yeah, you don't. We don't even have our Christmas card me? done yet. What did you tell me? They uh, are done, but what happened? <laughs> we got your Christmas card, and my wife was like, Oh hell no! We're not sending out the photo that we took. <laughs> we we've got a, just a selfie in the living room. What'd you guys do? It was it wasn't quite that bad. No no no. We're at the we're at the point now where we just take a photo of the kids and maybe the dog. We took a photo of them. I'll tell you exactly what happened. We went out to get our Christmas tree, and we were at the Christmas tree farm, and we decided to take a photo of the kids at the Christmas tree farm, and that was going to be our Christmas card, and then. The photo wasn't exactly what my wife had hoped for, and then she saw your your Christmas card, and she said, "There's there's no way that we're sending so when, this out." When it so. wasn't what when it wasn't what she hoped for, what did you say? Are you kidding me? I've been married That's long enough. Said, right? I, I've been married long enough to say okay. <laughs> I just said okay, okay. I'm not. <laughs> you look. I'm a not, smart man. I, look, there's certain things I'm going to sweat. That ain't one of them. We just went through. We just having a bunch of work. Done. We had two rooms remodeled. Trust me. I learned so how to say thing. okay. So our family is spread out. Like, Shauna has family up north. All my family's back east. Like, we're all spread out. So it's like, this is the one time when we get our Christmas card, Christmas card that we need this thing, like, to look point. legit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You haven't seen any of us. You don't, you know, they see our kids probably, you know, once a year in the summer, you know, mm-hmm. and they're going through major changes. So it's like. Let's be at our best with this See, card. This card is going everywhere too, and people are going to put these this card on their desk. Yeah, you know what the thing is when when my yeah. kids my kids are a little older than your kids. When my kids were your kids' age, we got a photographer. We went down to the beach. We did like we did the whole thing. We had a montage for our Christmas card. Yeah, it's going down every year. Now, th- no, it won't. It won't. I tr- trust me. So, well, trust me. At no, some- you trust me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At you some don't come point- down here. I'll go up there. You will, you will meet Shauna and you will. Oh, it's- and plus, her, she has like photographer friends, you know? So we, we have like everybody's okay. on hand and we're, we just have access to all that stuff. I'm going to give you. And I support it. How old are your kids? They'll be eight and four in a week. Okay. When you're. I'm going to give you six years. Six years from now. Six you'll years you'll, from now. you'll be taking you'll be taking a photo on the iPhone and printing that and that'll be that'll be the Christmas card. I'm making my call. I'm making my call now. Well, you know you know why that's not far off because think about how wonderful these phones will be in 6 years. You can do it now with the portrait. It's very true. So that's not that's not far off. That's not far off. Uh I'm glad we agree. Okay. <laughs> so one last thing, just kind of to wrap this, put a bow on this, and to, to look at, I don't know if you've looked at the playoff standings right now. They're out of control right now. Yeah. The last we talked about this subject, you thought that it would be the status quo, certainly in the AFC. You didn't think that the six were going to change. The order might change. And we've got the Chiefs, the Texans, the Patriots, the Steelers, the Chargers, and the Ravens. So... Do you still stand by that? You don't see the Colts jumping in. You don't see the Titans jumping in. I mean, well, cause honestly, the, yeah, because the char- Chargers and the uh, Chiefs, they're, they're in. They already clinched. Right. But among the other four, Texans, Patriots, Steelers, Ravens, do you see anything changing there? Patriots are figured out. If Patriots get knocked out of the playoffs, I'll, I'll dye my hair blonde. Oh, <laughs> hold on. T- time stamp that. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> Oh my goodness! They get knocked out. I'm, That's Od- not happening. We'll go to t- we'll go to Odell for for tips on that too. For tips, <laughs> yes. Okay, so in the NFC we have the Saints, the Rams, the Bears, Cowboys, Seahawks, Vikings, Eagles are on the outside looking in. Redskins are on the outside looking in. Do you see anything changing there? It's funny that division always comes down to whoever wins is in because two teams. Actually, potentially two teams could get in from that division. If Seattle and Minnesota just blow it, if they both drop their last two games, and, you, which is you insane. have two NFC East teams in the, in That's the insane, playoffs. Which is insane. 
Do you see that happening? I'll dye my hair blonde for that too. <laughs> If we get two East teams, oh. it's either one. That's my my AFC East hair dying is the Patriots lo- is out, and if you Man, get we, two East teams, we have a we have a really good shot at seeing Will Blackman with blonde hair. There's a you do solid be- chance of that. There's a solid chance, man. Don't do it to me, guys. Love it. All right, that's <laughs> that's enough for this episode of Buker and Blackman. Don't forget to, f- to follow Will on Twitter, at Will Blackman, and me, at Rick Buker. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram, at Buker Friends. And please, we have, by the way, we've crossed the 50 rating threshold. So we will be giving away the Jerry Rice football. I will be putting together a bag of swag for our next giveaway. Uh, but uh, you can still rate us and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Screenshot the review. And tweet it to us at Buker Friends, and you'll be entered for a chance to win our next swag. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in our next podcast exactly what that is. Also in my next podcast, or our next podcast, rather, is, I don't want to be proprietary here, I caught up with David West, former Golden State Warrior, wanted to find out his uh, first year of, of, first months of retirement, and the fact that he's involved in a pro-collegiate basketball league that they're looking to get started in 2020 so that if you want to go to school and get an education, you can. And if you want to do it while you're getting paid to play basketball, you can do that too. Had a conversation about that. In the meantime, Will, so glad to have you back. Uh, Dee, thank you. Thank you for stepping in. And we'll keep this ball rolling. Thanks for listening.